Hello, so now we will discuss uh, another process in the chapter catalysis that is hydroformylation of alkene. Okay, so as the name suggests, hydroformylation of alkene means whenever we are having an alkene, hydroformylation means a formyl group and a hydrogen group is being added over that alkene. Okay, this particular process is called as hydroformylation process. Okay, so what does it say? There is an addition of hydrogen and formyl group. What is formyl group? C double bond OH. Okay, so this particular group is formyl group. Okay, and hydrogen. Okay, so whenever the hydrogen and this formyl group is being added to this alkene, so that this double bond is removed, this particular reaction is hydroformylation. Okay, and in this reaction, there is a catalyst which is you cobalt catalyst which is used in order to catalyze this reaction. Okay, so this is the catalytic mechanism which we will be discussing. Okay, so um, the hydroformylation reaction is the addition of hydrogen and formyl group over a alkene. Okay, so this particular reaction, this is also known as oxo process. Okay, and another name of this process is known as atom economy method. Okay, so hydroformylation is the addition of hydrogen and formyl group over an alkene. Fine, this process is also known as oxo process as well as atom economy process. Okay, now how does the react? We will discuss the complete reaction first. Okay, so uh, the reaction is suppose we are having an alkene, let's say this alkene. Fine, we are going to do the hydroformylation of this particular alkene. Okay, so we, uh, the, the alkene will be given CO carbon monoxide plus the addition of H2. Okay, this, this will be the mechanism. Now, the catalyst which is being used in the hydroformylation is cobalt catalyst CO2, okay, CO8. Right. This is used as a catalyst, okay? It is used as catalyst, cobalt catalyst. Fine. So, what we are getting after the addition of catalyst and these two compounds in alkene, formylation of this alkene will take place, okay? So, this double bond will be removed and there will be addition of C double bond OH formyl group and hydrogen group, okay? Now, one of the very important thing which we need to remember, so we have to add two things over this double bond. Now I can add a formyl group over here on, on, also and hydrogen over here also first thing okay and I, I can add formyl group over here also and hydrogen over here also two things I can do so two products are formed in this particular reaction how they will be formed so first product will be this is linear product Plus, we are having one more product. Okay, so this is branched product. So, what happened here now? Branched product. So, what we did is we added formyl once at this position. Okay, we have added C double bond OH over this position. This, okay, in the first case. Okay, and hydrogen over this pro, uh, this product process. Here is hydrogen which we have added. Okay, here hydrogen and at this point we have added this C double bond OH. So we got linear product in the first step. Okay, also I said we can uh, uh, we can do the same uh, vice versa also. Okay, so at this time I have added C double bond OH to this place. Initially I have added at this place. This time I have added formyl group here and hydrogen at here. Okay, so I, I, this time I am getting branch product. Okay, so in this way, the, during the hydroformylation of alkene, we get two products. One is linear product and one is branch product. Okay, now in the both in both the two products we will, will be formed, but what we uh, what uh, which one is more favorable is this linear product because this this linear product can be decomposed easily. Okay. This linear product is biodegradable. That is why two of the products are formed during the hydroformylation. But the one which is more preferred, favored is this linear product because 
it is e easily biodegradable and this branch product is not favored because it is not easily biodegradable okay so this was the complete reaction of hydroformylation okay we have used a carbon monoxide plus h2 for the hydroformylation of this lk along with the catalyst which will catalyze this reaction which is this cobalt catalyst co2 co8 and we are getting two product linear product and branch product okay so this was for the hydroformylation reaction now we we have seen what is the reaction now we will see the complete mechanism that how these products are forming okay so just so we will start from here so sub, uh, okay so uh, one of the very important thing which we have missed it is what happens we are using a catalyst over here we have seen that we are using a catalyst cobalt catalyst so what actually happens okay so this cobalt catalyst okay so this we are having co2 co8 okay so what happens this cobalt catalyst since we are giving h2 in the reaction okay so this h2 and catalyst is also in the reaction right so this h2 will react with catalyst also so in the very first step what happens this catalyst reacts with h2 okay and what happens there is a oxidative cleavage of this catalyst okay in the reaction mixture itself so initially there is a oxidative cleavage oxidative cleavage and we are getting h co co4 which is a 18 electron intermediate okay 18 electron intermediate and after that this particular compound goes into ligand dissociation ligand dissociation okay and we are getting a true catalyst which is h co co3 okay so this is our true catalyst will which will be going in the catalytic cycle and catalyze the reaction to get the products okay so this is our true catalyst okay i'll repeat it once more so what is happening in this reaction first we are giving a alkene okay a co and h2 and a catalyst to get two products so since we are given h2 in the reaction so this uh, catalyst which is initial which is also present in the uh, reaction it will first react with h2 and there will be oxidative cleavage due to this h2 with this uh, co2 co8 okay so there will be oxidative cleavage and it will form hco co4 which is a 18 electron intermediate right and then after the formation of this intermediate this intermediate again goes in ligand dissociation there is a dissociation of ligand one of the ligand in that intermediate that get dissociated okay so in this uh, intermediate the ligand co there are four co so one of the co get dissociated okay and what we get what we are left with hco co whole thrice okay so this is the true catalyst which actually then participates in the reaction okay so this was one of the very important part because sometimes it is asked just to confuse the students that uh, which is the true catalyst which actually catalyzes the reaction whether it is this one or this one so uh, yeah this is our catalyst but it it goes in some reaction steps that, that is oxidative cleavage ligand dissociation and actually the true catalyst which is this one okay which actually catalyzes this reaction right okay so we have seen what are the reaction of hydroformylation okay how um, formyl group and hydrogen adds over this alkene okay and what was our true catalyst now we'll uh, we'll discuss this very important mechanism okay so we can see here hco co4 it, it, it is the 18 electron intermediate which we got after oxidative cleavage so this is that intermediate okay fine and since i have said it, a ligand dissociation is taking place over this intermediate so a co is getting removed and the, after ligand dissociation we are getting a true catalyst which is this one okay hco co3 we are having three co or cobalt and one hydrogen so this, this is the true catalyst which is then take part in the reaction fine so this is our true catalyst okay this one now what is happening we are given a catalyst okay and we are given an alkene which uh, we have to do the hydroformylation okay so to this catalyst alkene is there in the reaction mixture so this alkene will be then added okay so what will happen in the first step this alkene uh, here is the cobalt the very central metal atom so this will coordinate with this alkene 
So what happened here? This a uh, uh, cobalt of the uh, catalyst is coordinated with the alkene. Okay, this shows that the cobalt is coordinated with both of the carbons simultaneously. This arrow shows this. Fine. Okay. So in the first step, this cobalt is coordinated with this alkene. Now, what happens? We are also giving CO in the reaction. Okay. So now CO is being given to this compound. This particular compound CO is being given to. Okay. Now what will happen? Okay. So uh, since uh, this cobalt right now it is coordinated to both the carbons but in the next step it will coordinate to only one of the carbon and the rest of the carbon which is left without coordination hydrogen will be given to that one okay so this will be going to our next uh, next step okay now we uh, since this cobalt is going to coordinate with any of one of the, the two so what will happen? It, it can coordinate with this one also. It can coordinate with this one also. Two possibilities, right? Okay. So, in the first case, what happened? This cobalt has coordinated to this carbon. Okay. And since now this carbon is left. Okay. So, this carbon is uh, getting this hydrogen. This hydrogen is removed, removed over here. And this is coming to this hydrocarbon. So, what happened in the first case? This cobalt has coordinated with this carbon. And this is what we are getting over here. Okay. Okay. And at the same time, CO is also, and uh, this CO ligand, CO, uh, okay, carbon monoxide, this is also given to the compound, okay, this compound, uh, same time, CO is also we are giving, and the coordination, initially it is coordinated to both the carbons, now it is being coordinated to only one carbon. So, both the things are taking uh, place simultaneously, okay. So, what happened, this cobalt is coordinated to this one, hydrogen has moved to this carbon, because now it is left with uh, um, no cobalt. Okay, so this has removed to this one and at the same time, what ha what uh, we came, came with, cobalt, the CH2, this carbon directly coordinated to cobalt, here it was CH, so this hydrogen moved to, the, to this carbon, so CH2, okay, and we are giving CO, so we are getting one CO more on the cobalt, fine, okay, same, if, if our condition will be different, suppose this cobalt is coordinating to not this one, this time it is coordinating to this one, okay, so this is another case, Okay, so what happening in this one? This cobalt has coordinated to this carbon. Fine. Okay, and here what is this? This CH2. Okay, so this is CH2, but it is left with no cobalt now. Okay, there is one uh, one more site which should be uh, where from where it should be bind. So the hydrogen again moves to that one. Okay, so it becomes CH3. Fine. So what happened now? Cobalt has moved to this uh, uh, linked to this carbon now. Fine. And at the same time, CO is inserting, so we are getting this compound. So there are two cycles. Why? Because there are two possibilities. Okay, and we will we'll get two product lin linear and branch one. Fine. Okay, so till now we have understood that uh, once we are getting this thing and once we are getting this thing because this cobalt once it will coordinate to this one and in the next it can coordinate to this one. Fine. Now what will happen since CO is also there? We have inserted CO also there. So now, what will happen? This CO will move and this will insert in this alkyl part. Okay, this will happen now. Okay, so what happened while going from here to here? This CO has been moved and this has inserted in this alkyl part. So we can see here that CO, C double bond to CH2, CH2 and this here CO is there. This CO and this CO. These are the three COs, this one. Okay, and this particular CO, this has been inserted and therefore it has become C double bond O, CH2, CH2R. Fine, clear? Okay, same, similarly, in this one also, these, C, these CO are as it is, but this CO has inserted in alkyl part. Okay, so what happens? These three COs are as it is. This part of CO is inserted in this one. Similarly, in this one, okay, fine. What are the What is the last step now? What happened? Now, since H2 is there in the reaction, so this part, this complete part, now this will be removed, okay, and it will form our new uh, new product, okay. So, when this part is removed, we are getting C double bond O, we are getting CH, C double bond O, and this product, and the uh, carbon which is left with no, no, bound, uh, no binding, it will be given hydrogen, okay. So, from this, we are getting this product, okay, and when similarly when we are having this product we with this part will be removed okay and this carbon which is now left with no co cobalt it is given hydrogen okay so we are getting this product so in this way we are getting two products a linear product and a branch product okay so i will once uh, once more i will explain this 
what is happening this is a true catalyst a uh, alkene is given okay alkene is first coordinated the two carbons of alkene is first coordinated to cobalt but as the reaction proceeds this cobalt can coordinate to this one also and to this one also so what happened in the first uh, uh, method the cobalt coordinated to this one and the hydrogen moved to this carbon okay just to satisfy its four bonds okay and the second part this cobalt coordinated to this carbon okay as the reaction proceeded okay what happened in the next step this co migrated to the alkyl part here also the co migrated to the alkyl part and as the reaction completes we are getting two products over here okay and which are the linear product and branch product so in this way the, in this complete formulation hydroformylation of alkene we get two products we have seen how we are getting two products Okay, so we always get a linear product and a branch product, but since a linear product is favored, okay, because it is easily biodegradable and the branch product is not, okay. So, this was it for the hydroformylation reaction. It was simply a hydrogen and formyl group addition on a double bond, a alkene with the, with the help of a catalyst, a cobalt catalyst, okay. Okay, so this was it, a complete mechanism in reaction. Thank you.